up, guys? Welcome to Shock Surplus. We're in the shop today. I've got Bowman here, my right-hand man that knows a lot more than I do. But this is my Tacoma. We are doing a shock changeover today. This is gonna be suspension number nine or something. I have so many. Yeah. <laughs> so we've ran a lot of different shock packages through this Tacoma. It's got like 280,000 miles on it, tons of experience. And so we know all of you guys have been waiting, a lot of people have been waiting for an 8112 review, deep dive review. And these DSA pluses that we got here from Bill Stein have been sitting on the shelf for way too long. Way too long. Well, and when Bill Stein hinted at them, it took them way too long to make it really. Like we heard about these in 2019, 2020. Yeah. And we didn't have our in, in our hands until 2023. So we've yeah. we've been waiting a while for these too. Yeah, so there's been a couple changes you guys may have seen before. They were previously a silver model, or a silver just zinc only body, uh, and then they updated to the Evo Gray body. And these this Evo Gray is not just a new paint job. It's not officially Cerakote, but it is definitely a, similar. a very similar coating that's going to protect your body from the, the typical drawbacks of a steel body, meaning, you know, rust and some corrosion issues and whatnot. So Bill Stein went all out on these shocks. Uh, the DSA Plus is the, the latest update, even more than the normal 8112s that you guys may have seen out the gate a few years back. This now includes a jounce cutoff jounce adjuster here. Oh, can you hear those clicks? Here, let me get the microphone. No, yeah, those are good clicks. Nice. I live for a good snap snap. On yeah, the these clip, are a lot better I mean? than some of our other ones. Um, and then you got dual speed adjustment on the reservoirs. Um, we won't dive into too many details how awesome these shocks are. We've got, Bowman did another video separately on uh, the deep dive and all the details. On how the aiming tools work. And we had a, a cutaway for it too, so you can actually see rather than me trying to explain it real good. Yeah. <laughs> so we're getting uh, we're getting these on the Tacoma to give you guys the, the best review that we can. Uh, really how it compares to the BP-51s on here that has been on here. The Fox 2.5s that have been on Jeff's. Fox 2.0s that have been on here. Bill Stein and all the different packages that we've seen. Icon that have been on here. Kings that we've ran. I believe these to be the best shocks on the market for the Tacoma. Yeah. If you're doing high speed situations out in the desert, dunes, whoops, all that. What's your kind of expectation? What are you thinking about getting these? What do you know about the Tacoma and what our customers are, are looking for? So any, the first thing and the biggest thing that I was really excited about is having low speed compression adjustment. If you're really wheeling your Tacoma, likelihood is you don't have a front sway bar or you're at least disconnecting it. This doesn't have it. Yeah, this one doesn't have it. Jeff's doesn't have it. And so having the ability to dial in more low speed compression so it's a little bit more stable on the street, it's gonna be a big help. Uh, second thing, obviously this jounce adjuster is a big deal. It effectively is controlling flow into the compression or your, your you know, into your bump stop that's really on the inside. Mm -hmm. Those JCOs are, effectively a hydraulic bump stop inside yeah. the shock. And I've even noticed on my Bronco, which has had the dollar store 8112s, the yellow ESCVs from the factory, and it would basically articulate right until that I could feel that jound stop engage. So if you are taking it slow, you're in a rock garden, you don't have the same drawbacks and bump travel articulation um, that you would with the standard 8112s because you can back that off. Also, they kind of, I mean, you've been in something with 8112s. Yeah. Sometimes you hear that, the clack clack mm -hmm. of that jounce stop engaging. When you back it off, it doesn't make noise. And you really don't need that jounce stop when you're on the street. So that really kind of fixes any issues that I had with the 8112s. And they're already probably my favorite set of shocks, like you were saying. You know, the big thing is on these Bill Steins compared to like, let's say a King 3.0, is one, you're also getting a compression and rebound zone. Two, it's adding dampening force compared to the most of the other internal bypass designs. So whereas like, let's say on these OME BP-51s, they're bleeding off fluid around the main piston in the ride zone to make it ride softer. Mm -hmm. These are valved the way they should be valved at the main piston mm -hmm. and then give you the additional support out of your ride zone. So they're able to be way more supportive. And unlike these BP-51s or an ADS or a Fox internal bypass design, they use a full size piston, which is super nice, yeah. you know, and like you compare to like a King 3.0, they have to intentionally limit travel on these Tacomas because like that giant coilover hits the arm at full droop. They end up being, although maybe 
a little down on piston size to a King 3.0. They end up being probably just as good or better because one, you get the rebound zone. Two, you get basically two stages of of your compression zone. Mm -hmm. um, well, three if you count the main ride zone. And you have more usable travel. So yeah, these are my favorite shocks. And like Buzz's Tundra is still running around on his fine. And he's yeah, been- so buttery. It, they still work great. And they've yep. been hammered on for the last two years, yep. which you couldn't say for anybody else. Like if you beat any other shocks that hard. These, uh, Bill Stein is also, I don't know if they came out right and said it, but, uh, and if we're allowed to say it, but uh, you know, they're using near military grade seal to, yeah. to make their 6112s and their 8112s and these 8100 pack shock packages uh, as durable as possible. So they're using seal packages that are, I would say, probably better than most of the race guys out yeah. there right now, uh, which allows the durability, allows the longevity. Um, and, you know, we're going to definitely be on these to see how far we can take them. I don't anticipate any issues. So we've been selling a number of these sets already and it's been nothing but positive feedback but yeah one of the things we're really looking to do is compare them against so many other situations out there because we have the we're blessed to be able to run all these packages through a bunch of vehicles and uh, just really get you guys a, a good how do these feel how do those feel do you actually need something like this let's talk about lift height real quick because so that gets kind of uh, confused with uh, wheel travel and why you actually need lift yeah. height and and some of these things, you know, I'm only concerned with lift height on the front of this Tacoma in order to clear these 33 inch tires, make sure there's not a lot of rubbing at full lock. I'm not trying to run 35s or 34s on this thing. So I'm not, I'm looking for the most minimum amount of lift to clear the tires at lock. And so if I could get two inches of lift, make that happen, I'm good with that because it kind of, it, it makes, it allows the front suspension to do its best. Yeah, right? exactly. So these are uh, recommended not to go past two and a half inches from uh, of, of front height from Bill Stein. From a, on a second gen, two on a third. There we go. Yeah. So I'm, we're gonna run them probably less than that. I kind of experienced a lot of top out when I was pushing these BP51s to two and three quarters, three inches of lift. A lot of top out going over, you know, aggressive bumps where that front wheel would kind of dive out pretty quickly. So I definitely always kind of keep that in mind when thinking about preload. If you guys are feeling that in your own suspension, reduce the preload on, on your setup. Now you were just mentioning or about to mention uh, steel body aluminum uh, threaded collar. Maybe dive into that real quick for people that aren't aware of yeah. the differences between adjusting on a steel body versus an aluminum body. People are gonna hear that it's a steel body, but wait, aluminum threads, what's the deal? Yeah, so the main body of this shock, just like the coilover, just like these rear shocks, is steel. Um, but this lower rod in and where the spring seats receive on and the threads themselves are aluminum. And aluminum generally, although these threads are great, they did a great job on them, generally is not strong enough to handle making preload adjustments, let alone on the vehicle, but you, you will need a spring compressor no matter what. Basically a steel body shock, you don't really want to do it, but uh, you can make small adjustments either on the vehicle or outside of a spring compressor to change preload. Mm -hmm. In the case of something aluminum, you'll just tear those threads right up. But to be fair, although you do have to get the spring compressor out, um, you won't have to compress the full length of it. You just have to compress the spring enough to take load off of these lock collars so that you can spin them by hand. Mm -hmm. And Bill Stein actually gives you preload measurements relative to lift height, so you have a rough idea of how much lift you're getting, which is a really big deal. It doesn't, it might not sound like it, but it is. Usually on a threaded body coilover, uh, they'll let you, they'll tell you how high they come set out of the box, how high you can go or how low you can drop them, but don't really give you a reference for the amount of preload to the amount of lift and don't really tell you where it's going to end up per the sub models, engine options and what vehicle they're going on. So mm -hmm. being able to go, all right, 15 sixteenths and 17 30 seconds or whatever of preload gets me to X amount of lift makes it super easy. Mm -hmm. And each of these threads is spaced. So that's about, I believe it's about an eighth inch of ride height adjustment. Mm -hmm. So it's, you can basically, even without measuring, kind of have an idea where you are. And they tell you where they are out of the box as well. So mm -hmm. we've found them to be pretty accurate. Um, you know, they go down to the 32nd number in terms of preload measurements. So like 
Sometimes they may be a 30 second or two off, but yeah. they're usually pretty close to what Bill Stein says they're gonna yeah, be. Yeah, German engineering, they're gonna be on point pretty much 99% of the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, regarding ride height, if you guys are looking for three inches of lift, three and a half inches of lift that we know a lot of you kind of king shoppers are looking for, these are probably not gonna be your best option. The, and, and the reason why is like, not, not that the spring can't be preloaded that high, but because of all the internals, the optimized ride zone and how that functions with the jounce cutoff, the RCO cutoff, uh, the, the rebound cutoff, sorry. Mm -hmm. And you want to be able to have that main piston riding where it's designed to ride in order to utilize the internal bump stops uh, at both ranges of, of travel. So by preloading it too much, you start working, you start moving that, that, that everyday daily driven ride zone, the trail ride zone to the kind of a inappropriate place where you're not going to, you're yeah. not going to be getting a uh, good uh, performance. Um, and so, or comfort, it's going to ride like garbage. Or comfort as well. <laughs> yeah. So that's really where you start to see the effects, uh, too much preload. Now, like I said, you, you can, just not recommended. Yeah. Uh, these are the extremely performance oriented. Every single piece is meant to go fast and opt and, and, and sit in the ride zone to make both RCO and JCO work at their absolute best. Um, so preloading too much, trying to get too much lift height for 35s and all of that, you really start to mess with it and wasting your money because you can achieve those that lift on a much less expensive package if you want. Yeah, um, So and that additional lift really isn't going to save you from having to trim the things that you're going to have to trim for, anyway, a, yeah. for a 33 or 35 on these Tacomas, like yeah. one and a half inches and taller on a third gen or like two inches and taller on a second gen mm -hmm. ends up just not really you're not gaining much. You're still gonna, gonna have to run a lot of caster, cut your cab mount and beat your, your, uh, your uh, pinch seams in. And like you were saying, the big thing about this is not travel. It's not actual spring preload or spring forces or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's staying within the ride zone. So let's say, and it probably doesn't have 10 inches of travel, but let's just say there's 10 inches of wheel travel that, and they put four inches of travel for the ride zone two inches for the jounce cutoff or the, the bottom out zone, your bump zone, and two inches for your rebound zone. If you, let's say at their ideal setting, let's say that's an inch of lift mm -hmm. is in the middle of that four inch ride zone. So you have two inches of bump, two inches of droop where you're in that nice happy place where it rides night and mm -hmm. isn't ramping up compression or rebound to keep you from bottoming or topping out. If let's say you go up another two inches to three, you're now out of that ride zone. You're in the rebound zone. And so you're in a zone that is designed to keep you from topping out, which means the rebound valving is insane. It's insanely stiff on rebound. Mm -hmm. So it'll even feel like it is topping out on smaller bumps, even though the suspension isn't even running out, mm -hmm. just because you're hitting effectively a bump stop yeah. for rebound. Yep. You know, and the same thing if you go too low, if you, you know, are setting them, which is why they don't really recommend you go to stock height, although they have the spring and adjustment to do it. Mm -hmm. You're right on the jounce compression or jounce cutoff, so yep. your bump zone. So you're just sitting on a on a bump stop. Yep. It's gonna ride pretty stiff, yep. and so you want to stay in that zone. And realistically, even the coilovers that go up to three, three and a half, brands like Fox King and Icon will be the first to tell you that. It's not a good idea. Yeah, they don't ride great. You yeah. can do it. It's yeah. not going to ride as good as it could because it would perform better mm -hmm. with an additional inch of droop travel. If you're looking at these lift height, probably not your first, not, not your first reason for getting it. You're just yeah. looking for something that has better performance and that should be your goal. Any upgrade and mm -hmm. making the tires fit, you know, it's really going to come from the upper control arms that you probably need with these anyway. Mm -hmm. And three inches of lift isn't gonna move your cab mount. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. so uh, it ends up being just run them. Honestly, how they're set out of the box are just a little bit taller um, and you'll be happy. Yep. Going to the rear and lift height, these are actually a super long travel shock for oh. a Tacoma. They're actually like almost a full inch longer than the 5160s, mm. which are like the same length as everybody else's two to three inch lift shock. So yeah. there are a very long shock. Bill Stein only recommends these up to the same inch and a half of lift. Yeah, they're, they're being super conservative. As the 5160s? Yeah. I would say two is safe. We're, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see on this because we got about two inches of 
you know, real ride height gain out of the rear on Icon RXTs, yeah. uh, but also a bunch of extra gear on the back. And so I'm, I'm really, I'm gonna keep an eye on where, where these land on the truck and we'll do some before and after measurements against the BP-51s and, yeah. and where these kind of land. So something to keep an eye on for sure. Yeah, definitely. Well, and it's a little off book, but we have set people up with Icon Omega 2-2 bypasses in the back with their 8112s. Oh, okay. And they, it, it feels the same. Okay. It feels the same, yeah. Um, they have 40 clicks of compression adjustment. Gotcha. The bypass tubes are in the same place. Uh, and that Icon RXT shock is 12 inches to travel. Okay. So I think these will still work great with that leaf pack. And, mm -hmm. and I think for most people that, that would be fine. But if you did want to get the most articulation, I'm very confident to say that you could run an RXT spec Omega 2.2 bypass with these. Mm -hmm. And performance, general feel would be like this, yeah. Except the same performance plus another inch and a half of travel. Got it. All right, guys. Well, we're gonna wrap up. We're gonna get the, the install is underway on the Tacoma, uh, and then I cannot, you know, we've actually got a trip planned to Calico this weekend, and so I can't wait to hit the dirt and really just see how it feels. I've got some ideas. My expectations are all the bumps are kind of just be flattened out a little bit. It's not gonna be. I want to. The BP for the ones aren't harsh by any means, but you could. Just you could tell those valleys are a little bit deeper than a, a 2.5 or a 60 millimeter piston usually feels. Yeah. Uh, and so I got some expectations. I can't wait to share them with you guys. And uh, let's get these installed. Uh, we got some new SPC arms going on as well, which we're going to get a video on. And then uh, review will be next. Can't wait to bring it to you guys. Thanks for tuning in and hit us up with any comments or questions and uh, we'll dive into yours uh, and your application as well. Thanks so much. Yep. See you on the trails.